If GitHub Copilot writes clean, working, bug-free code, it might just take my job. If it writes awful, buggy code, it might still take my job. I'm just kidding, I, I don't have a job right now. Now Rust isn't listed as one of the languages that GitHub Copilot is best at. It lists Python, JavaScript, TypeScript, Ruby, Java, and Go. But the website does say it understands dozens of languages, so I'm assuming Rust is one of those. So we're gonna see how well it works. As we test it out for Rust, we're gonna look at two main things. We're gonna look at its level of capability. What should you expect it to be able to do and what should you not expect it to be able to do? Number two, we're gonna look at what's the best way to use it. Is the best way to use it to write a comment to tell it what you want it to write? Or is it to write a function name and have it try to auto-complete that function? Or is there some other mechanism that can be used to get it to write the code that you're looking for? I've got a few tests to kind of kick the tires on GitHub Copilot. Some are really fun, others are academic, and others are more practical. Let's take a look. The first test we're gonna do is to make a web service that deals with books, and each book has an author, a number of pages, and a genre. I started out a bit disappointed with this test. I tried writing a comment telling Copilot to create a struct with a book name and its author, and it came up blank. But when I actually wrote struct book, it began to suggest the correct field names as I started each new line. It seemed like it knew what I was trying to do initially, but maybe it wasn't confident enough to make the suggestion until my subsequent actions boosted its confidence a bit. I prompted it to create a collection of books with random values for the fields, and it did fairly well. I noticed it wrote only part of the function initially, but when I accepted the partial function suggestion and moved to the next line, it would make correct suggestions on each new line until the entire function was written. Again, I'm guessing it shows only the part of the prediction that it feels most confident about and omits the rest. What? Is that right? I don't, I don't actually know. Yeah, I think that's... Wow. Okay, I'm impressed by this. Ultimately, I came away with a fully working web service using Actix Web, but I had to make adjustments to its suggestions many times. One thing I'd later notice as a pattern is that it used framework APIs that are now deprecated. There's no way I would have been able to rely solely on Copilot without being somewhat familiar with the framework already, but I did feel like it sped up my work significantly. So we wrote a full Actix Web application using GitHub Copilot to help us. It made some really, really good suggestions. I definitely wasn't able to write the entire app without looking up examples. I definitely think it helped me write the application faster, but it, I definitely didn't feel like it did it for me. All right, this next test we're gonna do is we're gonna see if GitHub Copilot can solve the traveling salesman problem. And this is a problem where you have X number of cities on a Cartesian plane with X and Y coordinates, and you wanna find the fastest path from one city back to itself, but you have to stop at all the other cities along the way. This problem is actually really hard to solve without considering every possible permutation of cities. I don't know what GitHub Copilot's gonna do. I would be happy if it actually understands what I'm trying to do and just tries every possible permutation of cities and picks the shortest one. Uh, let's see what it does. GitHub Copilot generally did a decent job with this one. Similar to the Actix Web example, it was too shy to suggest a city struct when prompted to do so. But when I typed struct city below the prompt, it immediately suggested exactly the fields I was looking for. It fully understood my intent when I asked it to generate 10 cities with random X and Y coordinates. I explained the traveling salesman problem in plain English in a comment, and it suggested what appeared to be a dynamic programming approach that might be considered optimal for an exact solution to the traveling salesman problem. It assumed the existence of a distance to function in the city struct, which I didn't have initially. Typing distance to inside the city struct yielded a suggested implementation that was exactly what I needed, but it was trying to call a square root function that doesn't exist for integers. I changed the X and Y coordinate types to F32. They probably should have been floats to begin with. Then I made a few more adjustments and I was able to compile, but the solution didn't actually work. I got an index out of bounds panic when attempting to run it. I didn't attempt to fix the problem, but it seemed to be some kind of off by one bug. It looks like it's creating a vector with one element and then in the code, it's assuming that it has at least two elements, but the logic looks mostly correct. It looks like it's trying to do what's called the, the uh, held carp algorithm, which is a dynamic programming approach to solving the traveling salesman problem. I got the sense that if I began changing the wording slightly in the prompt to get different solutions, I'd probably get a working one eventually. Moving on to the next test, we're gonna test how it deals with binary trees, whether it can create a tree node structure, whether it can build the tree from an array of numbers. Maybe we'll see if it can invert the tree too. Hopefully it doesn't tell me to F off. I'd say Copilot did pretty well on this test, at least in the end. Prompting for a tree node structure gave exactly what I was looking for, but similar to the other tests, I did have to type out struct tree node to get the field suggestions. Prompting for a vector of 10 random numbers yielded exactly what I was looking for. Oh wow, look, look at that. Create a binary tree from the vector. It figured that out on its own. In addition to writing code for you, it also predicts what you're gonna ask it. <laughs> so in addition to doing what you ask it, 
it can predict what you're going to ask it. That's pretty cool, I think. Prompting Copilot to build a tree using the values in the vector started out a little bit rocky. Initially, I prompted using the function name build tree from vector, which yielded a suggestion that had a pretty serious bug in it. Wait, what? It's passing the same vector to both the left and the right nodes. Or it removes an element from the vector and makes that the value of the current node. That value is gone from the vector, but then it passes the resulting vector or the rest of that vector to both the left and the right. It should be passing, I think it should be passing half of the vector to the left and half to the right. If you didn't do that, you'd get a ton of duplicate values, which is kind of what we're seeing. Instead of fixing the implementation that Copilot gave me, I decided to start fresh and prompt using build binary search tree from vector instead, which actually gave me a correct implementation. Oh, okay, this, this looks a little better. I'm not sure if clarifying that this needed to be a search tree was a differentiating factor. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Okay, I, I would say that's a pass. GitHub Copilot passes. It passes on creating a binary search tree and printing it out. Oh, can it invert the tree? Of course, the most important test. Prompting Copilot to write a function to invert the tree yielded a correct solution right off the bat. I guess Copilot is better than the author of Homebrew. That looks correct. So it can invert a binary tree as well. Binary trees, very academic, so I kind of expected it to excel at that. You're going for a coding interview? Bring GitHub Copilot. I'm just kidding, they probably won't let you do that. All right, now let's try a simple DynamoDB read and write. Let's see if GitHub Copilot can do that. Okay, okay, so it's actually trying to use Risotto, which is the unofficial AWS SDK that pre-existed the official Rust SDK that's now in alpha. Okay, I think I'm gonna pass on this one. There's not enough examples of the official AWS SDK yet, so it's probably just gonna try using Risotto, which I don't think is super valuable right now. I think eventually Risotto is gonna be deprecated. I don't know for sure, but yeah, I'm gonna punt on that one. Okay, this next test is we're gonna to try to make some kind of game using the most popular game framework for Rust, which I believe is called Bevy. I've actually never used it before, so this is a good test. I have no idea what I'm doing here. We're definitely gonna to try to make something graphical, maybe like a graphical tic-tac-toe. That'd be super happy if it could build that without having to do too much Google searching. I could say Copilot failed this test, but I guess I was expecting it to be a pilot instead of a copilot, which probably isn't realistic. I tried setting up a simple Bevy application, but I couldn't even get that to work. Similar to previous tests, a quick look at the official Bevy documentation revealed that Copilot was suggesting code that appeared to use outdated APIs. This reinforces the finding that Copilot isn't yet a substitute for learning how to use frameworks. I'm beginning to realize that you can't really go in blind and not know about the framework that you're gonna to use to make something. GitHub Copilot's not gonna dig you out of that hole. For logic that's well known, like academic problems, GitHub Copilot seems to be pretty good. It still does make a few mistakes here and there. For diving in head first in a framework that you've never used before, it's not gonna work. You're gonna to have to walk through a tutorial yourself and maybe it'll help you along the way if the API for that framework hasn't changed too much recently because it does seem like it's using examples that are semi old. Building something with Bevy, which I've never had experience with before, just did not go well. There's no way I'd get off the ground running with just Copilot. If I didn't know anything about Actix Web, Copilot was not going to save me there. I don't think I would have gotten very far. All in all, I'm very pleasantly surprised. I've never used GitHub Copilot with another language. I'm curious to see how much better it is at Python and JavaScript. I think it's pretty helpful for Rust, but yeah, it's not going to take anyone's Rust jobs quite yet. That was a fun test of GitHub Copilot. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.